Last year, Samsung caught LG with their pants down when they introduced their Quantum Dot OLED TVs and gaming monitors, blowing absolutely everything out of the water. But now that LG has had enough time to turn around in the urinal, will they be able to beat Samsung or will they once again fall short? Well, let's take a long, hard look at their best upcoming displays to find out. Now, this year, it's an all out jungle rules slap fight between the LG G3, which promises up to 70% higher brightness, and the second generation Quantum Dot OLED S95C from Samsung, which allegedly tops out over 2,000 nits of peak brightness. But what does all this nonsense actually mean, and which display tech should you be chubbed for? Well, first eyeballing the G3, these alleged brightness claims are in comparison to last year's B2, I believe, and and if we take a look at the B2, that thing topped out at around 700 nits for peak brightness and 145 for its full screen. Now, if we take a look at the G3 and we do the math, well, if you times it by 1.7, in theory, that would get you just under 1200 nits of peak brightness and just under 250 nits for its full screen brightness. Now, I have seen some articles stating that it could be as high as 1800 nits or even 2100 nits in its vivid mode, but of course, only monsters will run it in that mode. And I expect even when including the new heatsink, MLA technology, and brightness boosting algorithms, that LG's G3 displays will likely top out around 1100 to 1200 nits after calibration. But speaking of MLA, I do have some serious concerns with this tech. Now, in the past, MLA or micro lens array was tried but ultimately failed because although it did capture and refocus lost light, it destroyed viewing angles as it would be much dimmer when viewed off center where MLA was not focusing the light. Now perhaps LG has lubed up and snuck around this issue somehow, but I'm not sure how they could do that as MLA in principle and by design would suffer from this issue. But that said, I haven't had hands on with them yet and I haven't heard any wailing or gnashing of teeth over it from reviewers who did, but it's definitely something I'll be on the lookout for when I get my oily hands all over the screen. But how does this compare to Samsung's upcoming S95C? Well, if we do the math here, they're claiming around 2000 plus nits of peak brightness. Well, if we take that and compare it to the S95B, which I believe on its launch firmware got close to 1300, we're talking about around a 50% increase increase probably at best. Now the S95B does also exceed 200 nits of brightness full screen right now. And so if we take that times 1.5, in theory, we would be talking about over 300 nits of full screen brightness on the S95C. Now after calibration, what I'm really expecting is probably around 1350 nits or higher for peak brightness and 250 nits or higher for the full screen brightness. So now if we compare the LG G3 to the S95C, what we're talking about here is 1350 nits peak for the S95C versus 1150 on the G3, 250 likely on the S95C versus 220 full screen on the G3, and 144 hertz likely G-Sync on the S95C versus 120 on the G3, and of course the S95C with it being Quantum Dot OLED is probably gonna give you a little bit more color pop and possibly even better accuracy if you do choose to use this for some minor photo editing or video editing purposes. And also we have to keep in mind that Samsung is fixing some major issues with the S95C that were present on the S95B, such as the polarizer light issues where if there was light in front of it, the whole screen would kind of light up and apparently it's gonna have two times the durability so burn-in should definitely be less of a risk factor if that's what they're talking about. So ultimately, after taking a look at these two technologies, out of the box, the Samsung S95C is looking to be a huge upgrade and overall likely better display for both gamers and cinema enthusiasts looking for the best HDR picture and color vibrancy, assuming that pricing is similar and there aren't any major QA issues from Samsung or firmware updates that harm the picture. But... Only time will tell, and I can't wait to get my hands on both of these and give you guys some reviews to figure out what is truly the best display 
in 2023. Whether you're looking to connect a new console, gaming PC, or just need a fast and reliable HDMI cable to connect over long distances, RuPro has you covered with their RuPro AK HDMI 2.1 fiber optic cable, available in sizes ranging from 3 to 165 feet and can deliver a perfect full 48 gigabits per second connection over distances other cables could only dream of reaching. And with 48 gigabits per second of bandwidth, it can easily drive 8K at 60 FPS or 4K at 120 FPS HDR10 video through its ultra thin, flexible, and durable housing, and it even supports eARC. So if you're in the market for a cable that can drive a beautiful new TV or monitor, be sure to check out RuPro on Amazon today.